Hello my loves, it's your girl Tina here. Today I'm going to show you how I created this pretty blue ocean nail design. If you like what you see and you want to see the full process, then keep on watching. Today I'm working on my friend Zen. She can actually function with long nails, so I love doing interesting designs on her. As always, I like to work on her cuticles first. I'm going to show you how I do my dry cuticle care, also known as a Russian manicure. First, I'm going to gently push back her cuticles using a light pressure. Then I'll go in with my cuticle diamond bits. I like using these two shapes here and I usually start off with the flame bit first. For the speed of my e-file, I'll set it to about 5000 rotation per minute. Then I'll gently use my e-file to lift any dead keratin off the nail plate. It's kind of like giving it a light exfoliation almost. So I do this in a forward direction which focuses on one side and I'll do all five fingers first and then I'll pop my e-file on reverse and finish off the other side. I like using the flame bit because it allows me to really get into those side walls and help lift up any dead skin that may be stuck on the sides. Obviously this does require a lot of practice but I wanted to show you guys another option on how you can prep cuticles. Next I'll go in with my other bit and do the same thing. This bit is more of a cone shape and will help exfoliate any keratin that I may have missed previously. I'm going to give that a quick dust and then use my cuticle nippers to trim away any excess dead skin. Now you can tell which part to trim by looking at the color of the skin. It should be lighter and look white, meaning there's no like blood flow there. So if it's pink, do not trim it because it will hurt. Then I'm going to gently buff away the natural shine of the nail plate. This is a really important prep step for extensions or even when you're applying gel color on top. If the nail is too smooth or shiny, the product won't adhere well and it may cause it to lift later on. So if you find that your gel manicures are not lasting longer than a week and a half, two weeks, it could be because of the prep. Another important step is to remove any oil or moisture off the nail plate using alcohol. Again, oils can cause your extensions or gels to lift faster. Now for the extensions today, I'm using my Kiara Sky Jelly Tips Kit. I'm sure you guys have seen me use these full cover tips before. They're great for beginners and pretty fast to apply once you get the hang of it. These are the almond shape in medium. So first I'm going to size up each nail making sure the tip fits perfectly over the nail. You want to make sure the tip covers the nail from sidewall to sidewall and you shouldn't have to force the tip down too much for it to fit. If you don't find a size that fits perfectly, go with the slightly bigger size and then you can file it down like what I'm doing here. Next, I'm going to etch the inside of the tips with my e-file. The purpose of this is to create a rough surface, which will help the tips stick better onto the nail plate. Once that's done, I'm going to apply the prep and prime solution that comes in the kit. These two solutions will help secure your extensions and make them last longer. They air dry pretty quickly, so you don't have to wait very long. Then I'm ready to apply the extensions. I'm going to brush on some builder gel, which is like a thicker consistency gel on the inside of the tip, leaving a small blob at the end. Then I'm going to firmly place this over the nail, pressing down, starting from the cuticles towards the free edge. And then once that's in place, I'm going to cure it. This can be a little tricky to do at first. I actually find it easier to do these extensions on myself versus someone else. Cause I don't know, I find it a little bit fiddly and hard to keep the pressure down when I work on someone else. But 
you know, you do get the hang of it, it just takes practice. Next, I'm going to paint on an extra layer of build gel to help strengthen the nails and also help to fill in any gaps that I may have left around the cuticles. Once that's cured, I'll wipe away the sticky layer and file the sides because sometimes the gel could seep on the side and kind of make your nail feel stuck. So I'll just kind of pull back the skin and file that side. I'm giving that another wipe with alcohol or you can use gel cleanser. And then we can start on the nail art. I'm using this very light blue gel color from a Korean nail brand called From The Nail. And I'm gonna paint that on the index and ring finger. Next, I'm using this cat eye glitter gel in blue on the thumb. And I'm painting that on about two thirds of the nail, creating like a, a random curve. So I'll paint one coat of this cure and then on the second coat I'm going to use my magnet to shift the glitter particles around. You want to do this pretty slowly because the glitter can shift pretty quickly and depending on what sort of style or shape or design you're going for you want to just be slow and steady with this. After playing around with the position of the glitter and how it shifts I'm pretty happy with how this is looking, so I'm going to cure that. Okay, back to the other nails. I wanna try out this Aurora powder I got from YesStyle. This works well over a clear, non-wipe top coat, so I'm gonna paint a layer of that on first. And I'm just doing it over the two light blue nails I painted before. Once that's cured, I'm going to rub the powder on top and ooh la la, I'm liking how that's looking. So I'm gonna repeat that and then seal it with a top coat from Marcart. For the middle nail, I'm doing the same design as the thumb, so I'm using that same blue cat eye gel. For the pinky, I always feel like I opt for a glitter gel. So today is no different. I'm using the Aurora Glitter Gel from D Gel and I'm painting on two coats of this. Now that I've got the base colors on each nail, it's time to make it a little bit more interesting and add on some nail decorations. I chose a silver chain for this nail, finished off with two pearls on the ends. Originally, I was going to leave it at that, but the blue color was really giving me like ocean water vibes. So later, I'm gonna go in and paint on some waves. But first, let me finish sticking on some more pretty stones and charms, cause you know, I like to make my designs look a little bit extra.
Okay, now I'll create the waves. I'm going to paint on a line of white gel, just following the wavy shape of the blue part that I've painted on previously. Then I'll grab a gradient brush and stipple the white color to blend it out. And this should make it look like waves. Then with any remaining white on my brush, I just go a little bit further down and create smaller waves. I'm going to repeat this with the thumb. Okay, I'm really happy with how that's looking. So let's just apply top coat over everything, making sure all the stones and chains are secure. Here's what the design looks like once it's cured. I'm really digging the combination of the blue and the silver embellishments. Normally I gravitate towards gold, but I was feeling silver for this set. Plus I really like the almond shape. It makes Zen's finger look long and slender. If you guys enjoy watching these type of nail tutorials, you can check out my previous designs. I actually did another design on Zen's other hand before, so go check it out. It's a lilac Chanel design. Let me know which design you would rock, the blue or the lilac. Okay, that's it from me guys. Remember to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I shall speak to you guys next time. Bye!